everyone. Now we come to part four, types of system from the chapter one, introduction to signal and system. We have already learned up until basic functions and all involve um, signals. So now we go for system. A system can be classified depends on how the system interacts with an input signal. Remember that I said a system uh, a system will have input signal and also output signal. So a system can actually modify the signal or just extract information from the signal. A system can be viewed as a process that results in transforming input signals into output signals. Grab uh, the block diagram of a system. Okay. Um, it has input and also output signal. So this is system. We can classify the system into several classifications. The first one is linear systems. The second one is time invariant systems. The third one is memory and memoryless system. And the fourth one is causal system. A system can be said as linear if the output is proportional to an input. And this system must fulfill all these properties. The first one is additive properties. So let y1 corresponds to the output of the system with the input as one. And another one, we have a system with output y2, which corresponds to the input x2. Okay. So, for additive properties, x1 plus x2 must correspond to the output y1 plus y2. So, this is what it means by additive properties. For the scaling properties, x1 will result in y1. Means x1 is the input, y1 is the output. Therefore, if there is, an, if there is any... Um, integer here or if there is any scaling here for x1 okay it also must result with this uh, k multiplied by y1 which is the output so if here is a this one also must be a okay or if this is 3 then at the output also must be 3 that is the scaling properties for the superposition properties Again, the same example, if x1 as the input corresponds to y1 as the output and x2 as the input corresponds to y2 as the output, therefore, if we combine additive and scaling properties, k1 x1t plus k2 x2t must result in k1 y1t for the output plus k2 y2t um, for another output. Okay? So, this is what we call linear system. This k here can be any numbers. It can be any uh, constant. And also, if um, the system does not following all these properties or violates either one of these properties, the system is said to be nonlinear. Next slide, which is time invariant system. Okay. A system is said to be time invariant if the behavior and also characteristics of the system are fixed over time. That is why the system is also called fixed, um, fixed system. It means that a time shift in the input signal results only in the same time shift in the output signal. If you see at the equation here, if yt is the output, for the system with the input xt, then if there is any time shift in the input signal for the same system, there will be also the same time shift which is by t0 at the output signal. Time invariant system is called time varying system. It means that if the system does not follow these properties, uh, does not follow time invariant system, we call it time varying system. Okay. And another one is memory and memoryless system.
this is the um, easiest system that we can um, differentiate between each other. I mean, between memory and also memoryless system. So the system is said to be memoryless if the output at t naught depends on the input at time t naught only, meaning depends on the, uh, at the input on that time only, regardless of the inputs before or after t naught. The output is a function of the input at only present time. Okay, in other words, the output does not depend on the past time or uh, on the future time. It only depends on the input at that time or at present time only. For example, here, Vt is equal to Rit, the resistance. The resistance does not depend on the input um, previous of the previous or also future time. Okay. On the other hand, a system is said to be uh, to have memory, or we can also call it dynamic system, if its output signal at time t naught depends on the input at time t naught and also inputs before and after t naught. Okay. On the uh, in in other words. The output signal depends on the past or future values of the input signal. For example, is the uh, circuit with capacitor and also inductance components. And this circuit is said to be a dynamic system because the output depends on the past history of the input. Okay, as opposed to the circuit with only resistance because it depends only at the present time. So if that circuit has um, resistant, a resistor, inductor and also capacitor, that circuit is said to be a dynamic system. Okay, because it still depends on the inputs before and after that present time with the existence of these LC components. Another system is causal system. Okay, causal system. Um, it means that output at any time depends on the input only for t less or equal to t naught and does not depend on the value of input for t bigger than t naught. Okay, in other words, uh, output only exists after an input was applied to the system. It means that if the output has any future element, it is said to be non-causal system. For a causal system, it need to depends on the current or past system only. Okay, so the causal system is still a memory system because it depends on the past value of the input. However, it does not depend on the future values. Example here is yt which is equal to xt minus 2. So xt minus 2, we know that it involves only on the positive side, okay, only on the positive side um, of the origin. Okay. And then this system is said to be causal. Okay. On the other hand, if uh, you see the equation here, yt is equal to xt plus 2. Okay. You know that this system involves the signals on the negative part. So at, at the negative part, it means that the signal is the future signal it has not passed through the origin so this is called non-causal system causal system is also referred to as physically realizable system because this is a logic system that can be developed and that can be built because it depends on the current and also past input we cannot build um, realistically, we cannot build any system that is based on the future system and the exact future system because we as a human, we cannot predict the future, right? So we can only develop a system based on the past or only based on the present uh, input, right? So for the future, imp future input, we can only predict. It is not exact. So this is basically not a causal system for the system that uh, depends on the future input. Okay. Uh, realistic, realistically, we cannot um, we cannot build that system.
Okay, we can only predict the future, but we cannot exactly know the value of the future input. Prove the causal system and also non causal system is it is not that difficult because when you see uh, if there is any shifting of time of the, uh, for the system or for the signal, um, if the shifting involves to the right side of the origin, so it is causal. If it's to the left side, then it is non causal. This is um, this example one is from past year final exam question. Normally, the students will be asked to differentiate between two systems. Okay, this is uh, for the theoretical part. Or you have to prove based on given signal, whether the signal is a memory or memoryless, whether the signal is causal, time invariant or time varying, linear or nonlinear, and so on. So for this example, um, the question is, an engineer is asked to design a filtering part for radio taxi receiver prototype. And this filtering part includes two types of systems, which are memory and memoryless. Explain the difference between these two systems. And please provide one example for each system. So it means that when you explain the difference between these two systems, you will get two marks. And you provide one example, you will get another two marks. So for this theoretical part, you need to be able to explain whatever that you have uh, understood. Okay. And then your explanation must be precise and uh, please give example as well. Okay, so this is the answer. For memoryless system or instantaneous, the system responds at any instant t. This depends only on the present value of the input, which is value at t. Okay, the, uh, for, the, for example here is resistance. And for memory system, which is also known as dynamic system, the system response at any instant t depends not only on the pre present value of the input but also on the past value of the input, okay, which is values before t. The example is capacitors and inductors. Okay, so the answer can be in uh, your own sentences or words. So you don't have, you really don't have to uh, memorize word by word. But as long as you understand, then you need to be able to write it back in terms of uh, this kind of sentences. Okay, and don't forget to give the example as well. Okay, another example here. Okay, um, this, this um, question asks you to determine based on the given signals whether the corresponding system is linear or not. So for this kind of question, normally you will be asked on discrete time system but um, I took these examples from the book one of the reference book so I will show you here how you can prove whether the system is linear or not um, question number a y t is equivalent to t x t so the, to determine whether or not the system is linear we consider two uh, arbitrary inputs, or random inputs, x1t and also x2t. So we consider that x1t correspond to y1t as an input, okay, in which when we put in the equation here, okay, when we put y1t and x1t in terms of the equation here, it will become t x1t. And then another one we consider as 2t, okay, which corresponds to y2t. Okay, and if we put in terms of equation, then it will become t as 2t. And then uh, let, let's consider another one input. Okay, another one input, which is as 3t. So as 3t corresponds to y3t, which is tx3t, okay? So, let x3t here is a, let x3t here be a linear combination, combination of x1t and also 
as to t. So we here x to t when we say linear combination is a x one t plus b x two t. Okay, and a and b here, a and b here are scalars. And if the system is linear, okay, so you write here if the system is linear. System is linear. Then y three here, y three here is equivalent. Should be equivalent to, okay. If this system is linear, this is from all the same system, which is t x t. So if y, uh, if the system is linear, y three t here should actually uh, equal to a y one t. Plus b y two t. Okay, so from here we have a left hand side of the equation, which is y three t. Oops, sorry. Let me change the uh, color first. So consider the left hand side, which is y three t. Okay, from the left left hand side, y three t. Is actually equivalent to t x three t, okay. So where did I get this equation? Okay, I got this from here. Remember that we put um x one, x two, and also x three, and then we take x three as a linear combination of x one and x two, which will result in a x one t and b x two t. So we take the um, left hand side equation. If the system is linear, then y three t should be equal to a y one t plus b y two t. So let we let us take only the left hand side first. Y three t is equivalent to t x three t. Okay, and then we take out the t and we put x three from here. Okay, from here. So we will get a x one t plus b x two t. Okay, and then we expand the equation. It will become a t x one t plus b t x two t. Right. Okay, now you match it back. A t x one t, and you look at the equation y one and y two t. Can you match this with this equation? Okay, yes, you can. So what you can do is t x one t here is actually y one t. So you can put here a y one t plus b. Y two t, and then we compare it back with the right hand side. So is this equivalent to right hand side? Okay, this is left hand side. This is right hand side. So it is equivalent to right hand side. So since L H S equivalent to R H S, we can can conclude that. This system, which is in the uh, in the equation A, is linear. Okay. So try with equation B, which is y t equal to x squared t, and then we will discuss this in the class in the next lecture. Okay, in the next le uh, lecture. All right. So that's all for this part. Part four, which is types of system. I see you again in the next lesson. Thank you.